Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 1st, 2023. Let's get into the news and then we're going to watch some good clips. Lots of good stuff today. So the first one was is the escalation ladder to the escalation ladder to the escalation ladder keeps getting more heated. If we ever all survive a global thermonuclear war, I'm going to be shocked. But uh, Andre Gudelov wants Putin to strike Alaska to show what it's like to have dead Americans after Lindsey Graham said he loved seeing dead Russians. So, uh, you know, who knows where that's going to go. The other thing was um, Pergosian, uh, and I'm going to talk about this later in the video. We may see two million Russians pissed off on the uh, European border. That seems to be what Europe wants. Uh, who knows, man, it, this thing's getting crazy. It keeps uh, escalating day after day. Uh, I, there's going to be another video. The uh, uh, Russians sank the last uh, Ukrainian uh, warship. Uh, the port, this was kind of old news, but the port of Odessa was hit with a missile strike. Um, and then, of course, there were lots of missiles all over Ukraine in the last few days. Uh, and then you had explosions in Kiev, and then the news came out that the Russians are claiming that the entire Patriot battery in Kiev was uh, destroyed. By the way, I keep spelling it K-I-E-V, and then I, K I see K-Y-E-V. I'm not Russian or Ukrainian, and it, it seems like all over the news there's different spellings. If you know the right spelling, let me know. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of it. Let's watch the first fun video. This, because uh, I wanted to start the video with this is uh, this is crazy and it has nothing to do with war or anything. This is just fun because I found this on Russian television, but it's a, and it's, it ha takes place in the United States because these are American police vehicles. Check this out. So if you're just tuning into my channel for the first time, I talk about geopolitics, uh, the Ukraine war and everything else. But every now and then you have to start the video with something that is the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Holy moly, this is on uh, Russian television, and uh, you know, I want to paint the scene because this is a bunch of first responders and police cars, uh, ambulances. There's been some sort of major accidents that have taken place. Now, imagine these guys, you know, they're all focused on uh, the accident, you know, probably talking to witnesses, they're trying to get an account of what's taking place. Uh, and then this happens, and I want you to hear what the guys say. I, and I'll, I'm going to translate for you because, oh my God, this is this is the most amazing thing I've seen. Let's watch the video. Good. Gosh dang! <laughs> you can translate that when you want. I was like, holy yes! Look at the police cars. They're all like, holy moly, what the hell just happened? We're just sitting here at a crime scene. Look at all the number of police cars. And then this happens. All right, wasn't that cool? Holy moly. I <laughs> never I never dreamed we'd see anything like that. Uh, so anyway, I did want to get into a clip about the garden. Grow a garden, grow a garden, grow a garden. And you're thinking, well, you know, why don't you get into the other war stuff? We're going to get into that in just a minute. I made, a, made another night video because I've made, uh, God knows, I work every day. I, I, I'm praying for rain because there, with rain, I don't have to go out and work on the garden because <laughs> you can't. I'm not getting out there in the mud and trudging through it. But each day I'm digging and my back can't take it after breaking my neck. So anyway, I, I you know, somebody always points out what I put up in the video. These are my potting plants. This is some fertilizer. That's a seed tray. And then, of course, uh, these, these are pretty cool. These are tomato clips you can use to clip in the tomato vines. And these are, I'm going to build a trellis and uh, have those, and eventually I'll make a video about that. But let's get into the rest of the video. So let's, let's watch my night clip on the garden. Check it out. All right, so this is my nighttime clip. I love these night special effects. There's all the soil. Grow a garden, grow a garden. We're heading for some troubled, troubled, troubled times. I always try to include this in the video, but look at this progress. I've been digging this out every day. My back's killing me, man. And uh, you got I just keep getting rid of that. This is the bad dirt, and we're putting that good dirt in here. I'm going to drop a yard of black dirt. To check out the sawhorses. Uh, of course, I had mulch in here, and that's what this was all about, was filtering that dirt for the mulch. 
But let's get down. See, here's the tools. We keep the tools out here. Every day, every day I work. I'm praying for some damn rain so that I don't have to work no more because I can't work in the garden on the rain. But check out these plants. These are the collard greens. Never planted anything right here. Just didn't have time for it. That's the zucchini. Look at the zucchini. This is a, this is my cherry tomato plant. Look at this thing. It's, it's, it's huge. I never even knew they got that big. And that's why I got a trellis. We're going to talk about that. There's a hybrid tomato plant coming up. There's another tomato plant. I haven't gotten tomato off of this one, but I've had a lot of cherry tomatoes. Look at these pepper plants. Oh my God, I got peppers, jalapenos coming in. Look at these. Uh, these are the blueberry bushes. I get something off of that. Man, the squash. I'm going to be picking this tomorrow. Look down in there. Holy moly. There's one big one right, right over there. Something hadn't eaten it. I've been chewing on that one. And, uh, you know, this is the cucumber plant. I need to build a trellis for that. All right, peace out. Stay free. Let's get into the video. Okay, I'm glad that you saw that. And before I get into all the other clips that I've kind of captured off of Russian television and Russia-Ukraine updates, I want you to listen to Colonel Douglas McGregor. And uh, this is Judge Napolitano. I always give credit where credit's due on uh, YouTube. Um, his channel's taken off. He's got, I don't know how many subscribers now. It's huge. And uh, he, see, he seems to be enjoying himself. And, he, you know, he has some of the same guests on over and over again. But anyway, let's, because this will explain why we can't get off this escalation ladder to the destruction of the world and what the leadership is like in Washington, D.C. I'll let you listen to what Colonel McGregor says. Uh, trying to come to grips with the idea that the United States government may have looked the other way or facilitated uh, an attack on, on the capital of Russia and, and whether yeah. they have the well, remotest to what idea has to say. of the ramifications of that behavior. Well, the combination of arrogance and self-delusion is very powerful. <clears throat> Remember, the, the majority of people that you're dealing with in Washington today still view Russia through the lens of 1994-95. They think they're dealing with a, a failed state that has a weak economy, uh, a society that is on the verge of revolt. I mean, these kinds of things are widely believed. Uh, none of it's true. Uh, anyone else with half a brain understands the economy in Russia is very strong. Russia has the resources and the capability to last indefinitely. They have a huge manpower pool. I mean, we go down the, go down the list, it's just not true. But unfortunately, these, these delusions persist. And then you add this to arrogance. And they think also that we are the same military power that we were in 1991. And judge, we're not. Uh, there's nothing we have today that the Russians do not also have. Whatever advantages we once had in many key areas, they're gone. You've, uh, you've seen. You know, I, I also wanted to point out uh, about the... Uh, the Russian military is that um, not only have they advanced beyond us, they outproduce us. And, you know, and how did this take place? Well, we had the military industrial complex and the Russian military complex uh, is not really about profit. It's really about the government held control of it. And, uh, and so in a time of war, which happened a year ago, now remember, they've been, they've been escalating their production for an entire year. Whereas our industrial complex is for profit, and we have unfortunately a lot of corruption, a lot of uh, you know a billion dollar airplane we could probably make for for let's say a hundred million, okay? But they overcharge us, the taxpayers. Uh, you want to say the U.S. government? You know we fund the government uh, by ninefold for all of these weapons. So so where where we're getting overcharged and getting less for everything, Russia's get getting the most for their money, and that's how their GDP, which is much smaller than theirs, can outproduce us in the weapon systems because our, our military industrial complex is completely corrupt. Anyway, just wanted to throw that out. Let's watch the rest of the video. All right, so I wanted to add some commentary on the next video because I, I love the uh, Duran. Definitely watch that channel. Uh, the escalation to the escalation ladder just keeps escalating. I've been trying to find the exact comments, and I, I, I'll probably try to get that on this video. Prigozhin and came out and basically uh, criticized the Russian command structure and said, hey, you know, we need to call up 2 million uh, Russian troops 
and fight this war on a global basis. What I want to include is my commentary about that, okay, is that Prigozhin cannot make those comments unless Putin is allowing him to do it. So I, my, this is just my opinion, okay? I think that Putin is allowing Prigozhin to, to voice what he wants to do. Now, imagine Europe, Okay, and then I in these idiots in Brussels and especially in the Biden administration, you're soon if 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 things go about the way that I'm predicting, you're gonna have two million, two million, two million. Let me just say that number a fourth time, two million pissed off Russians heavily armed on the European border uh, within the next year. If things go, if the escalation ladder keeps escalating, Chesnin. Now, you have to understand, Russia fought basically a war with uh, Chesnia oh, years ago. I, I, I didn't follow it very much back then. I wasn't geopolitical. Uh, but I tell you what, these guys are not to be trifled with. And guess what? Guess what's coming to Ukraine? Armed Forces Unit has been called to go on the offensive in Donbass, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. It's added that Ukraine's last naval warship has also been destroyed in the port of Odessa. Moscow says a high-precision strike hit the ship as it was lying in harbor. These are some of the unverified images allegedly showing the moment of that attack. And RT Steve Sweeney brings us the latest updates on the successes of Russian forces' recent operation. Akhmat, these uh, special operations forces, this is a unit based in uh, Chechnya, has started to make advances against Ukrainian troops in the key town of Marinka. Now, this is about 30 kilometers to the west. These guys are not to be trifled with. The Chesnians are, if you think the Wagner troops were bad, Chesnians are relentless. ...residential areas since fighting began in 2014. Now, we also heard the ministry say that Ukraine had lost some two 200 uh, soldiers in the Donetsk region, along with a range of military hardware. Now, this includes uh, a number of uh, armoured vehicles and transport vehicles, uh, and at least uh, two of these uh, uh, multiple launch rocket systems that are again used so effectively and to deadly effect on the civilian populations here. And as we heard in the piece that the last Ukrainian warship has also been strunk, struck, uh, uh, sunk rather, after it was struck in a precision strike in the port city of Odessa. Now it also added that in the last uh, 24 hours that Russian air defence systems which are working so hard uh, to keep the Donbass region safe have downed a number, so they said 12 uh, rockets launched by the uh, US supplied HIMARS system along with one of the uh, Storm Shadows. Uh, uh, these are the long range missiles that were uh, supplied by the British government as announced by the Defence Secretary Ben Wallace in, in uh, mid-May. Now this uh, comes, this latest develop, these latest developments come uh, after at least five people believed to be construction workers were killed and at least 19 were wounded in, in a Ukrainian rocket attack on a poultry farm uh, in Lugansk. But the latest right. developments you can probably hear maybe perhaps shedding, there's been uh, attacks on uh, residential and civilian areas across the All right, so the report goes on from there, and, you know, what's incredible is that Ukraine keeps expending its forces that were given them on civilian targets. It's insane. Potentially bring some relief for the people of Donbass, who, of course, All right, so let's, let's get to the next clip. For the last nine years. So another thing that came about, and as the West uh, says they have free speech, uh, the European Union says they're going to ban Twitter. And Elon Musk, uh, well, I'm, I'm, sounds like he's calling their bluff. And he says, okay, so be it. And uh, he's not going to allow the Ministry of Truth in the European Union to shut down Twitter. Uh, now, hopefully a lot of people in Europe have VPNs. I will certainly be available in uh, Russia, China, Brazil, and 83% of the world Twitter will be available except in the European Union. Uh, and perhaps the United States. But let's get to a, just a fun clip. Uh, this is a Russian multiple rock. And I say fun. You know, obviously people are dying on the other side of this. But I'm just fascinated by, by all this new hardware. Because I never saw anything like this when I was in the military. <laughs> can't imagine the Ukrainians on the receiving side of this. Look at that. And I'm a cloud person, I tell you, I take a lot of videos uh, when I go out hiking. 
So this next clip has actual personal meaning to me uh, because uh, when I was in the Marine Corps as a combat engineer serving in the Mojave Desert, uh, training on a Soviet live fire training exercise. Uh, anyway, the, the idiots, because I could just, I, I don't know, the heat just made me sleepy and I would lay on the ground and fall asleep and I was just sleeping in a, you kind of dig a hole in the sand, put your butt down. It's actually pretty comfortable and then you just kind of lay there and you, you a lot of times people don't understand in war or, or military exercises, you, it's a lot of downtime and so, you know, it just I would just say, well, catch the catch up on some Z's. Well, anyway, they decided they were going to roll a tank over top of me. Uh, it was an M60 back then, uh, just to date myself uh, way back in the 80s and uh, but anyway, I never thought I would ever see a video. I guess this is a hazing exercise. Check this out. And believe me, this is terrifying. This is absolutely terrifying. I can't, but these guys are doing it while they're awake. I was asleep. Of course, I woke up when the tank was over top of me. So they're going to roll this tank. I, I, you know, must be some sort of uh, initiation exercise. Uh, I don't know. But, you know, when you got a tank rolling over top of you, I mean, that... Suppose the guy hits the dial to the right. I mean, in the track, I mean, you're, you're just a smushed bug at that point, you know. And, and so I actually hit the track on my way out from underneath the tank because freaking idiots. All right, let's get, get on to the next uh, clip here. So this next clip is very important on the escalation, escalation, escalation ladder. Okay, because Russia, if you, if you want to understand, they have been refraining from hitting... Uh, uh, command i mean they had uh, there was one big strike that it's never been confirmed that the russian missile hit a uh, command bunker somewhere and, and killed a bunch of nato uh, generals and stuff I, I reported on that a while back but uh but russia's pretty much refrained from hitting the command structure because you know that's kind of an unwritten rule in war is you know you because if, if you're going to hit command structure on your side they're going to hit your command structure and the people in charge don't want to die <laughs> and they want their troops to die right well today putin changed all of that uh, after the um, drone attack on moscow and i'll let you watch this 40 second clip this is very significant escalation <laughs> By the way, those words that this uh, air defense system is something to be worked on, you know, those... To, to, my, to me, those are very honest statements. You know, I mean, when, you, when you've got all propaganda, they, they never want to uh, admit, you know, flaws or anything like that. I, it just seems to me that Putin's being very honest there. He's talking about it. But the significance of that statement is that they've hit the Ukrainian command structure. Uh, that means that all targets are on the table. Uh, Zelensky, be very afraid. Uh, stay, keep on your world tour, you know, be sure and go back to Japan, uh, Brussels, uh, maybe come back and uh, have uh, Nancy Pelosi sign a flag in the uh, U.S. Congress again, but uh, don't go back to Kiev. I, <laughs> your days might be numbered. And of course, we know that uh, Zeluzhny, the Ukrainian general, uh, you know, it, there's been some brief videos that have come out and maybe the guy's okay. I don't know. But anyway, this is uh, one more piece of footage. Uh, now, the, the Russians came out uh, today again and said that they have destroyed not just a portion of the Patriot battle system that was in Kiev, Kiev excuse me. They said they've destroyed all of it. 